been better about you know taking down my tidbits for uh, opens and random bullshit, you know. Okay. I'm waiting for this. I'm excited. When you have a note on your phone, it's like, you know, comedians or musicians, songwriters, when they think of something, they have to immediately go to their phone and they their phone is full of notes of ideas they have. So what magic do you have in your phone? Have you watched any of the McMillions show on HBO? No. Do you know what I'm referencing? No. Well, you just killed that one, John. What's it about? Tell me. Well, then it's more than a cold open. Then I have to go into dialogue and explain things and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, prov. So should I be watching it? Well, I mean, you remember the Monopoly game at McDonald's back in the day? Yeah. What if you found out it was all a hoax? Oh, you just piqued my interest. I mean, you have access to my HBO account. Yes. Well, it's on episode four now already. Okay, I know what I'm watching tonight after I finish editing. Well, then after that, we will resume this cold open on a future episode. Okay. Sorry to leave a cliffhanger for people, folks, or a turtle head, however you want to look at it, but my open is not good until John knows what I'm speaking of. Do you have any other shows or et cetera or books, et cetera, that we should be listening or <laughs> books, <laughs> reading, you, you watching? You think I read, son? I mean, you read a lot of text messages. <laughs> Everyone, my name is John Edwards, and with me is the very well-read Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad Shrinky Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. How are you, Zeke Baker? Still alive and kicking, uh, despite all odds. Just like Phil Collins, you were against all odds. I thought that was in the air of the night. He was also against all odds. How? That's the name of a song. So it was in the air of the night. I know. So hold on. What, Stan? Want to let you know today's show is sponsored by CastCartel.com, changing the industry standard in how you get your alcohol. They are like the Amazon of the spirits industry. They work with merchants and get liquor shipped directly to your door. So how do they do that? They reach out to these merchants who put bottles up on the site. You can then peruse through the site, see which bottles you want sent to you. Obviously, online retailing might be a little bit more than in-store because guess what? It's convenient. You want something really unique and rare sent to you, it might cost a little more, but you could get some of those day-to-day stuff for really good prices, shows up right at your door. You could just sit on your couch watching McMillions. You don't even have to get up. You could be watching whatever you want on the TV and ding-dong, liquor's here. So go ahead and check out castcartel.com. Also go on Instagram at castcartel. They're always doing awesome giveaways to their followers. You never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. Check them out. Castcartel.com and castcartel on Instagram. I was thinking cornucopia. I just like that word for some reason. It's such a good word, isn't it? But it, it, it's only applicable for, you know, speaking of a plethora of a hodgepodge of random shit in a thing. Although I would say myriad, but everybody uses it wrong. Uh, I think of myriad as like, you know, pieces coming together in a puzzle or, you know, maybe not a triangle, but like a rhombus or a hexagon or something like each side represents a different component and they're all necessary to complete the whole. Rhombus is a great word. How about Remus? (laughs) But I don't like when people use myriad because they always say, I have a myriad. It's I just have myriad. There's no qualifier before it there's no uh the well i'll parlay off of that to your you know don't like comment to a degree somewhere in between you know hanging out in the hospital and not breathing and eating and other things i I did some i wouldn't say deep reflective thought but you know in case anybody listening has been hiding under a big ass rock you know we had a will it pick yeah it had a i'll say so myself pretty damn cool tater holograph sticker on it lots of pms ensued and you know it is what it is i answered 99.9 percent. <laughs> no you didn't i had a lot i had over 500 on our quota instagram for the alone. year i'm done really you had more than <laughs> than our instagram did well, somehow people have realized zeke does the the randomizers and the shipping so they, they've started to circumvent you on the picks 
which is fine. Oh, I, mean, I know. You should be bubbly. I'm very I, th- There's still enough people. I mean, two weeks later, there were still people messaging me like, hey, is there any way to get this? And it's like, yeah, this was gone <laughs> the first day. <laughs> My thought was, and it's something I think, you know, we don't see it too much. You know, retailers probably see it more than us, but there's still that whole notion of, uh, you know, folks get a little upset, butt hurt, however you want to phrase it. I wouldn't say butthurt, but they they, they, uh, they take it personally. It's a little FOMO. But when they, you know, see a bottle that, you know, they helped put in somebody's hands and then, you know, it ends up on secondary, you know, folks get a little worked up about that. And inversely, I purposely on our pick, the sticker on the back covers up the bottle numbers. I didn't want to know. It's almost like plausible deniability. You know, if somebody decides, hey, I'm going to flip this for extra coin. Cool, man. I still wouldn't change that I sold it to you. And I, I don't want to think less of you because it. So, you know, I want every bottle to be, you know, a little bit vague to a degree. I want to drink it. But then at some point I got to a little bit deeper on this thought process and you you have to bear with me for a second, but I I really ended up rationalizing this to, it's almost like, um, you know, when you've got the ex-girlfriend and then one of your buddies hooks up with her, you know, at first the, the common response is to be a little jaded, upset, jealous, pissed, whatever. But then, you know, you got to step back, take a deep breath and just say, you know, been there, done that. <laughs> got the t-shirt, man. I walked away. If they want to sell it, cool beans. I'm not losing any sleep here. I think people get very upset. I wish we had more than the number of bottles we had. Oh, I mean, I, I thought about just putting stickers on Buffalo Trace bottles or Jim Beam and selling them. I think it'd go. I think it would probably go. <laughs> and if we could get a Buffalo Trace pick, we'd do that too, you know? Holograph Buffalo. You, you see my mentality there over a, uh, you know, let it go. There's there's no point in sweating what you can't control or, or getting bitter or upset over these things. No, but you just better not value it too low when you put it up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of things that are priced accordingly, we are drinking a Michter's 20 today. Before we get to that, want to let you know that we will be at Whiskey Warmer this month, March 28th, West Haven in Franklin, Tennessee. We did it last year. You know we had a fun time. We are doing it again. We'll be doing a little bit of podcasting. We'll also be making sure that we reach out, talk to everybody that walks by. Come check us out. Go to whiskeywarmer.com. First person to bring John a pineapple gets a prize. (laughs) I don't want a pineapple. (laughs) First person to bring me some food. Asterisk to the pineapple, as you must know the reference from last year. Yes. There there is a show on it, I promise. Or you may just know, which would be weird. Even more awkward. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) It would be very, very awkward. Zeke, you have the details on this Michter's. This was something that you brought. It was a split. For for once, I, uh, you know, I. I pull my weight at least every other month, I would say. I do have to say, a couple days ago, you did an admin thing in the group. I was very proud of you. I mean, I feel like it's that thing where it's it's rare enough to where if it pops up like, oh, man, the asshole spoke. (laughs) Somebody must have really done some dumb shit if he's talking up. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. But it was effective, and we'll leave it at that. Yes, back to the show. Today we're sampling... Michter's 20 from 2019, always one of the, uh, you know, most sought after releases, also very limited. I believe the past, uh, you know, at least two years now, they've had, you know, batches instead of single barrels based on the yield. And you got to assume at least a handful of barrels are probably going into these. There can't be much juice left in a barrel after 20 years. Let's just be honest. This was procured through a bottle share at the Whiskey House Nashville. We've been pretty fortunate and good about those over the past couple of years to where even if we and by we i mean you know the members of the house foot the bill at a secondary price we all vouch ahead of time uh yeah i'll take an ounce or two we make sure we have enough spoken for to justify the cost and you know we all get to taste the juice something this limited and rare you're going to be hard pressed to even find that a bar and i would never want to pay with this is going to cost at a bar simply because, and this sounds tacky, but what are they going to do? They might even give it to you in a rock glass. The environment's not good. There's smells all around. There's people all around. You're spending this kind of money. You deserve the ability to sit back and have 20 to 30 minutes to just enjoy it. And Zeke sweats a lot in public situations, so he's probably smelling himself more than anything. By sweat, you mean gas? 
gas and sweat. You get those uh, armpit sweats going on. <laughs> I mean, thankfully, I don't have those because nobody likes a big bald guy with pit sweat. Oh, yeah. Your head doesn't sweat. My head sweats, but my, my under my arms doesn't. But for this bottle of M20, we were fortunate enough to, uh, you know, get a little cut out of. It was batch number 19 for 2019, H1441, bottle 182 out of 634, and clocking in at a proof of 114.2. As with any of their previous releases, you know, undisclosed source, but it does say straight Kentucky bourbon whiskey. Kentucky? Kentucky. <laughs> That's right. I like when you read the batch number, it sounds like it sounds like you're reading your prison number. That's a different number, thank you. I have H14401. Can we not bring back those memories? One nine. They're not fun. But you just say it's no matter of fact. <laughs> well, as I was saying, this is a straight Kentucky bourbon whiskey. Source is not disclosed, but if you want to do a little research, obviously this is age twenty plus years. They're couldn't have been that many people making juice that far back that barrels are still hanging around from so you know there's three or four sources at best that you could really put your finger on for this one of them is in bardstown another one is in bardstown one of them is definitely not in lawrenceburg or cox creek no uh, of all my guesses i would never put four roses on this no i don't think frankfurt uh, they're out if you haven't listened, we were lucky enough to have a sample from last year as well. My conclusion for that one definitely was it reminded me a lot of pre-fire notes from various bottlings that I've had that were pre-fire. There's never been any confirmation, but at least for that release, that's kind of where I would point if I was a betting man for at least five or ten bucks. It's fun to speculate, though. Sometimes. What'd you get on the notes on this one? Because I, I got a fun note. I can't wait to I go. I know. You've, you've been bubbling. I almost want you to go first because you've been so giddy about this. Like, literally, we pour this. He sits down, throws a leg up, and then just giggles. And, ah, I got my notes, man. We're good. Are you done yet? I'm like, Jesus, son. I just smelled it. I, I want to hear this, actually. I, I don't want to wait. Go, you, you lead. So the carpet doesn't match the drapes on this one. And the nose, I immediately put it up to my nose. And I go, this is sunscreen. The nose was banana and coconut. It was like straight sunscreen for me. Did you get a little Rupert Holmes in there? No, but like I... If you like pina coladas. I was thinking about that, and I was like, I could sing this to Zeke. <laughs> and then I was thinking, get on the boat, the banana boat. I would jump off of the boat immediately. <laughs> or uh, put the lime in the coconut. I was thinking of all those things, but it was... <laughs> It was one of those things where I lime in the coconut. That's how you get a kid. Yeah. But I definitely was taken to like being by a pool or being in the Caribbean. And at first I'm like, man, this would be something that would be great to have at a resort as I took the nose. And then I took one taste of it and I go, oh, that that's not the same. And the the taste for me, it was dry. I definitely got the wooden leather. There was a little bit of orange in there too, but the main thing I definitely got was just a dry, woody, a little bit of heat, you know, because on the finish, on the finish, it, I really felt the burn on the roof of my mouth and definitely felt the hug. What's the proof on this one again? I know you're sipping it, but I can't read that far. Toss it to me. 114.2. Okay. It tastes a little bit hotter than 114, but I think that has to do with the age in there. You know, you put the age plus the proof. It's going to have that dry heat. And as we all know, you know, heat in Arizona is different than heat in Tennessee. So I liked it. I definitely don't like it at 700 bucks, but I don't want to go too far ahead. But I thought it was funny, just the stark contrast for me in the nose to the taste. I, I thought the taste was a very dry, hot, a little bit of orange in there, but the nose was so fun and fruity and I thought it was going to be a little bit lighter than it was. And then I tasted it and I was like, goo. No, it's interesting. And you know, that's the, the fun part. And also the reason why, you know, if you're tasting or doing a pick or anything along those lines, everyone in the room should have the common courtesy to write down your notes before speaking. The power of influence is a uh, MF -er, to oh, yeah. say the least. Um, so as you say that, I, I, I think, and I smell what's left in the glass. I can probably pick up a little bit of coconut if I want to, but it's really much more of like 
the the shell or the husk or whatever you you call the outside of it. I mean, if I picture one sliced open in half, instead of having my nose in the middle of it, I'm more on the back end or the side, and that little bit of coconut vapors leap, you know, seeping around the top. But you know, is almost like a smoke screen in front of it. That that smell from the shell or the husk or whatever you call that's always there in, in front of it. And then as it sits out, I mean, I'll even just say. It's got like a little bit of a maple syrup as it stays in the glass for a long time and that air gets to it. It's like it goes to more of a deep sweet. Yeah. And you know, I'll go into the notes and then kind of circle back, but it's one of those things where there's hints to where obviously you can't reverse time or go back. But I would say with this specimen, if you had, you know, somebody had taken a one ounce sample at year, you know, 15, 16, 17, et cetera. By the time they got to this point, they would have said, ah, shit, we should have pumped the brakes and grabbed this a year or two ago, probably. Well, Maybe more. What I don't know about Michter's, this has always kind of baffled me. It's befuddled me. They have a 10. They have a 20. They have a 25. Why don't they have a 15? They don't want to. I don't know, but you would think that there would be a lot of stuff that they'd be earmarking for 20 that kind of goes, oh, yeah. this should stop at 15. Well, and you never know. It, I mean, all the older 10s, especially those like real old ones, they had 15, 20 plus year juice in it. So to me, I, I would lend it to the fact of, uh, you know, sometimes less is more. And by having an M10, well, guess what? We only have to have at least 10 year old juice in here. If I want to dump a 30 year old juice as part of this blend, I can, and it doesn't upset any rules. And some of this 20 might have been good blended with a 10. So uh, I, I think. You know, sometimes a lack of labels is a good thing. So note-wise on this one, the M20 2019 nose, it really reminded me of a, like a mixed chocolate nuts jar thing. There's actually one at the Whiskey House. And literally inside of there is like these little squares of like semi-sweet chocolates, cashews that are uh, smoked and salted. There's some chocolate-covered raisins. There's salted peanuts. Just that whole gamut of, of you know things in that mix. And every time I open it, I get a certain smell in the nose off this. Definitely, that was the first thing I thought of. I was like, man, it's just like opening that jar and trying to figure out which one of those pieces I'm going to cherry pick out of there. But as the aroma comes out, it, it's very much in that space. Kind of moving further on to it, it reminded me to a degree of roasting a marshmallow, but very specifically on a stick. Not a coat hanger, not not metal, not anything else that would be, you know, non-sensory. Just be careful. If you're roasting marshmallows on a coat hanger, make sure it's one of those ones that doesn't have the plastic over the metal. Like, it has to be stainless steel because yeah, that stuff um, will melt into um, your marshmallow. I'd only have to worry about that with you. I'm just saying I actually have skewers because I make s'mores outside. I get Sophia the old school lot. metal hangers and wrap them all the way, but you leave the hook part there. So you can nook the marshmallow on it, and then if you hang it too low, it still won't fall off. Now, I get a little thing that has two little skewers on the end. And you would. Yeah, well. Yuppie. No. <laughs> no. But back to that point. It reminded me of, of like old school styles, camping with the scouts and stuff. You roast the marshmallow on the stick, and you eat that marshmallow right off of it, and you can't help but pick up some of the wood characteristics from that and, and that's really where the amount of sweet and the amount of wood kind of seemed to balance out for me and just even nosing it it had an aura of being aged or hyper aged i mean there's no way you would smell that and anybody in the world would think this is young whiskey or even 10 year whiskey i mean it it just smells you know a little musty a little old it's been locked up somewhere for a while so you're saying it smells like when you're around an old person I, I, I didn't, like I didn't get mothballs. You know, I've had that. Honestly, I, I've had some, you know, older stuff that I literally thought of mothballs. But, you know, to a degree, it's, it's a, you know, it's that closet you open in your grandma's house that nobody's peeked in in 10 years. And like, ah, a little musty, a little cold, damp, woody, you know, I mean. It's like sometimes you, you get that smell and you automatically want a butterscotch candy because you're just used to someone giving you one. Nah, it's more like the, what the hell are you doing in that closet, boy? Get out of there. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you got yelled at a lot. Um, Palette-wise, uh, kind of circling back to where you were, the first thing I really put down was that there was a fair amount of oak spice, and it's not from char. Uh, it, it's just oak spice. I don't think it's the rye grain necessarily. It's just that wood coming off of the juice. And to that note, the oak influence 
was more prevalent than a sweet oak influence. Yep. Uh, especially if you've had any of those old pre-fires and some other old dusties. You know, folks call it sweet oak for a reason. And at first I thought it was an asinine term, but I believe in 100% now that there are sweet expressions of oak. This just isn't one of them. It, it's just a, not harsh, but it, it kicks off much more spice. Moving past that, uh, two of the things I really got on the palate were banana nut bread and dark chocolates. So you got the banana too. Yeah. I mean, it was there. It took a second. I mean, you, you had to work to get through the layers of this and, you know, cheers to complexity, but getting there wasn't the easiest road. The other two things I wrote down that uh, just kind of stood out to me were a lack of viscosity. And then overall, kind of going back to that whole closet thing, it just seems musty. It's not the best word, especially for a taste, but if you've ever been in an old house, especially if it's been vacant for a while, depending on the weather, musty wooden closets, floors, etc. This is the old factory sense I get. So are you saying this pick is trapped in the closet? No, I wasn't referencing R. Kelly. Okay. But like you said, I mean, 700 bucks MSRP, 2K on the boards. Honestly, I like what you said about how you can tell it's mature. It's one of those ones where you nose it and you taste it. You go, okay, this is definitely an aged whiskey. I don't think you need to know that it's M20 to take a sip of it and go, all right, this has some age to it. I respect it from that point. It's an elder statesman. But the flavor where you really dug in and got to the banana nut bread and got to that other stuff, I did not get past the dry heat. It was some work. And I was lazy today, I guess. It is a day of the week that ends in Y. I'm not a lazy guy. You know, it was there and I was like, man, if I paid retail for this, I would have been a little bummed out. Oh, yeah. I mean, sorry, because I worked this last little bit down and I really don't remember what we paid for this, not to skirt the issue. I'm sure it was close to secondary. And that's fine. You know, that's, that's part of the show. And, you know, John, I'll tell you, we love to get what we can on the uh, the hookup from a distillery. But, you know, if we have the means and we're able to track something like an M20 down, yeah, we're going to cop an ounce and we're going to review it. And if anything, shit, we paid for it. It makes it even more of an unbiased review. Yeah. Or actually, maybe it doesn't. No, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, it's one of Damn those. Damn it, I paid how much for this? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think there's value in having it and there's value in tasting it. And I, I think it's more if you have the money to get this at a bar or split it with your friends, it's a valuable thing in tasting it and figuring out if you like that profile or not. It's going to get you from chasing some waterfalls if you can kind of figure out if that's your jam or not. I mean, you got to stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. But, you know, kind of what I wondered, and I'll, I'll even cap myself on this and, and, you know, your response. But as we try to keep our finger on the pulse of, you know, what are people into? What are the markets into? What are the masses after? All right, we got lots of new bourbon drinkers out there. I can't imagine anyone that's new to bourbon would even be impressed by this, so to speak. I think it's just people that have been around for a while that want some BDE. I mean, well, but this is, this is a certain profile, though. I mean, to to desire that amount of oak and that type of profile in general. But do people want that profile, or do they want that on the shelf when their friends come over? I mean, personally, at least with my friends, they're going to look at your willet. Well, I'm just saying hypothetically, if there's an M20 and a sweet ass hologram sitting on the bar. The sweet ass hologram is going to draw them in more. I think what we did was an exercise in the movie Up and the Dog. Never seen it. You've never seen Up? You have a kid. You need to let Charleston see Up. It's a Pixar movie, and there's a dog, and all of a sudden the dog sees something. He goes squirrel, and then like he could be in the middle of something to get that ADD. I feel like the holograph sticker was squirrel. It was like the ADD moment where everybody's like, "Ah, oh, this is shiny. What's that? What's that? A shiny ball." <laughs> Thankfully, what I would say, all joking aside, we talked about this for a little bit. The bourbon within that holograph sticker bottle, I think, is a very, very good willet. And I, I'm just going to leave it at that. Thankfully, Zeke and I, if we put something on there that distracts people and it's shiny, we're going to make sure that there's something good in the bottle to go behind it. Fair enough. What's your final verdict on this? I mean, if I'm offered it by a retailer... Uh, I think I would just have to tell them full disclosure, I'll give you the 700 plus tax, but in doing so, you're probably going to see it 
moved on secondary tomorrow. <laughs> and I would just want them to know that being a, a good conscious person. But no, um, I mean, like I was alluding to earlier, I mean, there's a lot of oak here. And yeah, I know some people get into it. I think it's much more of a scotch profile than um, a bourbon for at least the folks that I drink with or you as well, probably. Uh, it, it's just very unique and, and to me such a strong subset of people that would just take this and say, man, that's effing good. I just wonder as, as bourbon trends and grows and things of that nature, are we going to see releases like this literally only have a secondary value? And even when people taste and drink them, say, well, what the hell was the point in that? You could give me a four-year MGP and I would have told you it tasted better. I, it's something to think about. I don't know. It's not my jam. I don't like the the over wood, over dry, over wood aspect of it. It's almost like having a wine at that point for me, and that's not why I drink bourbon, but that's my profile. I'm going to want something that has a little more viscosity, a little substance to it. A little more jelly than jam. Yeah, a little more jelly than jam. I'm with you. There is a difference in the two. There is a huge difference in the two, and I do have a lot of jelly. All of our glassware was provided by distilleryproducts.com. They are awesome. They are one of the best places to go in North America. If you want your laser etched glassware, whether or not it's a Glen, it's a wee Glen. You have the flasks, you have the Tua glass, you have decanters, you have the tipsy Glen, the regular rocks glass. Go ahead and check them out. Distilleryproducts.com. I assure you, just do this. Go down to your distillery, your local. Say, hey, where do you get your glassware from? Chances are they are going to say distilleryproducts.com. And chances are they're going to say they either work with Janie or Vicky. Carson is out there making sure they get all their marketing stuff in. Three of them are awesome. Check them out. Distilleryproducts.com. Zeke, we're going to be at Whiskey Warmer again. Whiskeywarmer.com. March 28th. Make sure you come see us. We're going to be podcasting there. You can find us on Facebook at Dad's Ricky Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Ricky Bourbon. Find us wherever you download your podcast. Leave us an open and honest review like we leave open and honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. Where else can the folks find us? Good old Music City, USA. Ciao. Mother. Mother.